there! Welcome to the Upcycled Design Lab. If you're new here, my name's Cindy and I craft using recycled and repurposed materials to give you ideas on ways to make and create more economically and ecologically. And today I'm kind of redoing an old project that was pretty popular, but I think I've made some improvements to it. So here's the original dragonfly that I made and I used some salvaged copper wire and some aluminum can for the wings and then the body is made out of magazine paper beads and I will link to this project as well because there are some distinct differences and you might find this project a little bit easier to start with if you're wanting to make your own. Even though I think I've made some improvements, this little version did uh, actually sell at craft shows so it was a pretty popular item as well. But here is my new version and it is made almost exclusively out of the aluminum cans. The beads are made out of aluminum can and then again I used salvaged copper wire and I changed the wings a little bit. You can see that this one is a little bit bigger and its legs are a lot uh, sturdier. I kind of like the wings a little bit better as well. So. We're going to be going through this version today and like I said I will link to the other version in the description box. For each dragonfly you're going to need four empty cans and you want to clean them and if you've seen some of my other videos you need to flatten the walls as well. I will link to that video in the description box but you want to end up with some flattened sheets so you're just going to cut the top and bottom off and then flatten your sheets out. The other caveat is that you want one of your sheets to have the print removed. Now if you don't mind the print on the wings you can leave it there but I like to have solid silver wings. So there's a couple of different ways that you can remove the print. You can use a Brillo pad and some elbow grease but if you do this you want to do it either after the piece is flattened or before you empty the can. Uh, and it does leave a little bit of a more scratched up surface but you can get the ink off that way if you have some patience. I've also heard that you can use a pressure cooker. I haven't tried it so I don't know exactly how it works but you can look that up on YouTube if you want to try that way. Um, but the version that I like to use is just to find a can that has a plastic wrap instead of the print and that way you can just peel it right off and, you're, and, it, and you are left with a really shiny pretty silver surface. Once you have your cans flattened, you're going to want to either print out or download the files for the beads and the wings. And there'll be a link in the description box of this video on how to get to those uh, templates. So there are four different templates. There are three templates for the beads. These will make seven beads. You only need six to make the dragonfly, but these are just set up to make seven beads. So there are two templates that have the top and bottom of the bead that you're going to roll and then these are the middle section. So basically they're all straight cuts. If you want to try to cut them by hand you can certainly do that. I'm going to be using my Cricut cutting machine because it's just a lot more precise and it's just a little faster and easier. But once the pieces are cut then they're just going to be taped together. So there's a big piece, a middle piece, and a, a tip piece that are going to make up the, the strip that we're going to roll into a bead. The other template is for the wings and if you decide to cut the wings out on your Cricut cutter, cutting machine you're still going to want to print out the PDF version because part of the design is embossed. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut the wings and the bead sections on my Cricut cutting machine if you're interested in how to cut aluminum cans on a Cricut cutting machine, I did a full tutorial on that as well, so I will link to that in the description box. If you're familiar with your Cricut cutting machine, you probably already know how to cut some of these other materials. The one really nice thing about it is that it just it does just use a fine, a fine point blade, so you don't need any special uh, cutting blades to cut the aluminum. <laughs> Ah. 
So here are the sheets after they've been cut on the Cricut cutting machine. And just a word of caution, if you do have a sheet that you are that has no print on it, you want to be sure you're cutting the wing template out of that version. I almost cut the beads out of this one, which would have messed everything up. So these have print, you, and you don't need to worry about that. And then, like I said, if you do have a plain sheet, you want to be sure that you're cutting out your dragonfly wings with that one. So I'm going to go ahead and set the dragonfly wings aside because we'll be going back to them in a minute. And what I want to do now is just to go ahead and separate all my pieces here, which is very easy to do if you've never worked with the aluminum. It's particularly easy if you're working with the straight cut edges. So you just want to fold the pieces until you kind of break the edge. And this is excess piece here. So I'm just taking off the edges first. And then I'll separate all the pieces. So I've got my pieces all separated now and there should be three different sizes and each one will have a wide end and a narrow end. So this is going to be the very tip of the bead and then this wider end will match up with the smaller end of the next size and this end will match up with the smaller end of this size. So I'm going to end up with one long strip. If you've ever rolled paper beads, this should seem relatively familiar. So I'm going to take three, one of each of my sizes. We'll get these other guys out of the way. And then I have some metal tape here. You can find this at Home Depot. It's about seven or eight bucks a roll, I think. And it goes a long way in this project. So the first thing I want to do is just cut some small pieces of tape to adhere my piece so that I have one long piece. And I want a fairly good connection. I think I've got about an inch wide piece here. This tape has paper backing on it, so that makes it easier to work with. I want to tape on the silver side of my aluminum can. And I just want to match my edges up here. If your tape's too wide, you can trim it off. And then the last thing I want to do before I start my rolling my bead is I want to add a piece of tape to this little tip end and I want it to be a little bit longer. So I have about a two inch piece here. I'm going to taper it a little bit more at the end. I just want to fold it back and attach about half of the wider end of my tape to the tip of my aluminum and then I'm going to put the paper back down so that it, the rest of it doesn't get stuck on anything. So I'm just going to leave the paper on there for now. If you've ever made paper beads you might have just used a dowel or a simple bead roller to roll the paper with but you are going to actually want a bead roller for this aluminum because it's a little stiffer and harder to work with. I got this for less than $14, so it was not a really expensive purchase. It is made for paper, but it has a little pressure on it, so it helps you hold the aluminum as you're rolling it, and it just holds everything in place and makes it a lot easier to roll. However, you do need to start the end with a dowel, so I'm just going to roll it up a little bit, a couple of turns around this wood skewer. And then I want to tighten my coil so that it'll grip onto the bead roller. And if you don't, if it slips the first time around, you can take it off and tighten this up again. But then once you have your coil made, you can just slide the bead roller on. Oops, I went backwards. 
You don't have to, but I like to roll the silver side out. If you decide to roll the colored side out, you're going to want to put your tape on the opposite side. So when you're ready to start rolling, I like to kind of hold it in the back. And you do have to kind of watch it and make sure that you're getting it to roll relatively evenly. You might have to adjust this here and there. But it's pretty simple. You just roll it the same way you would a paper bead. You do just have to hold it a little tighter, I would say. And when you get to the tip, you can go ahead and pull the paper off and that will secure the bead and hold it in place. And then you can just take it off the roller and you've got your first bead made. Once you have all the beads rolled, you're going to want to put a sealer coat on it. It will just help to keep the beads from sliding back and forth. The, the core can kind of slide around and the outside can move a little bit. Plus for the next step, you're going to want to have the tape waterproof. So to do this next step, I just have some little toothpicks that I've put a little bead of hot glue on so that I can slide my beads on and they're pretty secure. And then I have a little bit of dried rice here so that I can stick my toothpicks in there when to dry. So I'm using some Mod Podge Super Gloss. You could use the regular version as well. And you just wanna take a paintbrush and put a little coat all over your bead so that the coils won't slide around and so that the tape is actually waterproof and secure. The Mod Podge has dried on my beads now, so I'm going to add some color. And to do that, I'm going to be using some alcohol ink, which can get kind of messy, so I'm going to be wearing some gloves here. And you just need a small container. You can use a lid if you want to. I don't really ever worry about that. And then you're just going to drop in some color and shake your beads around to cover them. You can add more ink if you need to. I like to mix colors too, so I might add a different color to this, but this is a nice pretty blue color. And once you have your beads colored the way you like them, you can just let them dry. And then once your alcohol ink is dried, you're going to want to put another coat of the Mod Podge on to seal the alcohol inks. So here's a quick little hack if you need it. I had some silver beads that are the right size for my eyes, but I wanted them to be black. So I just added a little black Sharpie marker to make the black eyeballs. So once your beads have dried with the alcohol ink and the extra coat of Mod Podge, you're ready to do the assembly. And you're gonna need some 20 gauge copper wire. I actually found some salvage wire that I used some wire strippers to get to the copper wire but you can certainly purchase 20 gauge wire at any craft store. You want to cut several different lengths. We're going to do one piece at 30 inches, two pieces at 15 inches, and three pieces at about eight and a half inches. And we're not going to need these short pieces right away. So I'm going to set those off to the side. We're going to start with the two 15 inch pieces. And I'm going to take one of my aluminum beads and just slide it on to my wire and then I'm going to find the little round beads that I for the eyes and I'm going to slide that on the wire also. Next I'm going to take my round tip needle nose pliers and I just want to make a curve in the end of the wire to sort of form the curly part of the antenna. So I'm making a really loose curl once I get it started, I oftentimes switch to just rolling it with my hand. The next thing I want to do is take my other 15 inch piece of wire and I'm going to go ahead and make the little coil in it as well. Just 
make it similar to the first one. And then I'm going to take my other round bead and slide it on as well. And then I want to take the end of this wire that's not through the large bead and thread it through the opposite direction. So depending on how long you want your antenna to be, I usually like about two and a half inches, I guess. I'm going to go ahead and bend my wire up. I'm going to make the other side about the same length. And then the next thing I want to do is take my 30 inch piece of wire and I'm going to thread it through my metal bead as well. So I've got two long pieces of wire and two shorter pieces of wire. So the next thing I want to do is make the a little neck for the dragonfly. So I'm going to take a long piece and a short piece and then I want to just kind of twist them. So I'm going to cross them over and twist about two or three times just to make sure that the wires are secured and it makes just a little length for the neck. I don't even know if dragonflies have necks, but the, mine do. <laughs> so next I'm going to put all my wires together and I'm going to get my second bead and all four wires need to go through this one. And once I have the first bead in place, I'm going to take the long wires and wrap them two or three times around the short wires to make a little spacer between the beads. And then I'll slide the next bead on and repeat that process, wrapping the long wires around the short wires until I have the rest of the beads in place. So here's what it looks like when you've attached all the beads. You should still have a couple of wires that are a little bit longer and some that are shorter. You can trim them down if you want to. I usually just leave them the length that they are and coil them. So I want the longer ones in the middle and the shorter ones on the outside. And I'm just gonna use my needle nose pliers again to kind of coil up a shape to make the little tail. So that's the basic shape. You can kind of play with it later if you want to tighten them up or curve them a little bit. We can reshape them. So now we're ready to add the legs. I'm going to go back to my three eight inch pieces or eight and a half inches and I want to kind of bend them in half. And the first pair of legs is going to go at the bottom of the first bead. And I'm just going to wrap it around a couple of times to secure it. And then I'm going to use my needle nose pliers to make a really tight little curve. I'm just going to repeat the process on the other side. And if your legs are too long, you can wrap them again, you can trim them down. But I like to kind of form a little elbow in them. To make the back pair of legs, I'm going to actually twist my two wires together. So they make more of an X, but they're applied to the dragonfly the same way. And I'm going to put them at the bottom of the second bead. I'm going to take both wires, fold them in half. Add them to the bottom of the second bead and wrap them around. And then I'm going to shape them the same way that I did the front legs, but like I said, they're going to have more of an X shape underneath on the bottom so that the middle legs come forward a little bit and the back legs go back a little bit.
The last step is to make and attach the wings. So you can see here I've got my aluminum sheet that I have not weeded yet and I've cut out my paper template. I want to go ahead and I'm just going to use a little bit of scotch tape to attach the template to my metal sheet and I just want to line up the template with the cut line that the Cricut made. And then I'm going to use a little pad. You could use a piece of thin uh, craft foam or felt and I'm going to draw in just this swirly decorative part of the wing. You want to press pretty firmly but you're going to try and stay on that line and just keep a nice smooth movement. So you can see my design coming through on the other side and now I'm going to go ahead and remove my template and remove the excess metal. And the next thing I want to do is I'm going to go around the edge just to draw a line about an eighth of an inch from the edge. So we've only embossed on the one side right now and you can see that this is kind of curling up and this is what the top of the wings will look like. I want to go ahead and flatten this out and emphasize my embossing a little bit more. And to do that, you can emboss just on both, gently on both sides of your embossing. Or I think it looks a little more interesting if you just choose one side to emboss on. So I'm just going to emboss the outside edge of my wings and one side of my swirl here. And to do that, I'm going to go to a hard surface, the larger end of my embossing tool. And I'm just going to carefully run my embossing tool along that edge that I've drawn from the other side. So here you can see what the finished embossing looks like and what it looks like when you've just embossed it from one side. So I'm going to finish embossing the wings and then we will attach the wings to the dragonfly. Here is the top of the wings now that I've gotten all the embossing done and you can see that it's flattened out once you have embossed from both sides. And we're ready to attach it to the dragonfly. And to do that I'm going to use some E6000 glue and I'm just going to attach, you might have to move the legs out of the way, I'm just going to attach the wings right to the bottom of the second bead. I'm also going to add a tiny bit of glue to the eyes so that they don't slide around and then once the glue is dry you can have fun reshaping all the wire and kind of shaping the dragonfly any way you want to. So that's a fun part of this project. You can shape the tail, the body, the antenna, and the legs. But for right now we're just going to secure the wings and the eyes on with a little bit of E6000 glue. If you enjoyed today's video please give it a thumbs up. You can check out more aluminum can crafts by clicking or tapping your screen now. Also hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and check the bell icon to select your notification preferences. Thanks so much for watching. I hope to see you back here soon in the lab for my next experiment.